Hello and welcome to The Box on Screen, our dip into the fantastic film and television archive whose home is The Box right here in Plymouth. Now today I'm at Mill Bay Docks, on board Ponteven, Brittany Ferry's flagship, and we're about to set sail for Roscoff to celebrate a very special anniversary. The link between Devon and Brittany was forged 50 years ago when on the 2nd of January 1973, Keresnel set sail for Plymouth for the first time, laden with apples and cognac. Much has changed in half a century. Brittany Ferries now runs a modern fleet of ships connecting the UK, France, Spain and Ireland. Today, pont and Armorique serve Plymouth, and I've dug out some archive footage of Armorique's namesake, making exactly the same journey to Roscoff in the 1980s. Julian, thanks so much for inviting us on board. Now, a lot has changed uh, in the past 50 years, but tell me, how did the story begin? Uh, but the history goes back beyond 50 years, back to the 1950s, when, when Brittany was an impoverished region of France with very poor infrastructure, very poor transport links, uh, and a cooperative of, of Breton farmers led by Alexis Gouvenet were determined to make a difference. So they set about challenging uh, the powers that be in Paris, uh, and part of which was to develop this deep water port uh, in Roscoff, where we're heading to today. Um, the aim, though, was never to actually operate a ferry company. It was just to put the infrastructure in place for uh, an existing operator to come in and, and take over. But that, that unfortunately didn't happen. And they had to go about getting a ship to get them started, didn't they? Indeed. They, you know, they, they were, weren't going to give up. So they raised the finance and they chartered a ship, Keresnel, uh, which was a converted Israeli tank carrier. And she set sail uh, for Roscoff to Plymouth on the 2nd of January 1973. And so what's the future of ferry travel? Uh, well, we're looking to a brighter, greener horizon. Uh, we've got four new ships that are joining the fleet, which are, are fueled by much cleaner LNG, um, two of which would be also hybrid powered. So giving customers uh, a much more sustainable way of travel. So from humble beginnings, you've come a long way. Yes, yeah, certainly, you know, and a lot's changed in 50 years, but reassuringly, um, the business is still largely owned by that uh, co cooperative of Breton farmers. Thank you. Now, one of the first ships in service between Plymouth and Roscoff in those early days was Benaday. This clip from 1984 gives a flavour of the entertainment you could expect to find on board all those years ago, as Television South West presenter Judy Spires discovered. There's some small fishing boats that sway at the moorings by the quay. Kept safe from craggy hills, those welcome craggy hills. Those hills and all, they'll guard me. That was lovely. What was that? It was uh, a little piece of music that we put together uh, for, a, for, a, for a film. And the words then that I've uh, managed to describe together. It's, it's, it's about... Um, it could be any Cornish fishing village. The, there's welcome craggy hills, the boats are swaying and mooring at, 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 at the quay. And then the last verse is an old Cornish poem that I've kind of pulled apart and, re and rearranged. There we go. Give her a big round of applause. Well done, Tony. Thank you so much. So 40 years later and the entertainment's still going strong. But for me, it's time to get some kip. So I'll see you in Roscoff in the morning. Roscoff is where the Brittany Ferry story began in the early 1970s. And since then, many British tourists have started their holidays from here. In the 1980s, Christmas shopping trips were all the rage, with the promise of fine wine, beer and local produce awaiting travellers coming ashore. The French call it the Christmas invasion. For the British, it's truly an assault course. 24 hours of spending plus a cross-channel trip. For something like 20 pounds return, over 1,000 Britons take the Christmas special to France. Shopping in the high street is nothing like this. I'm not going to make anything. Out. Well, I enjoy going, but I, I get the duty fees as well. So it's nice, it's enjoyable. Most of the 1,000 ferry passengers will end up here in Morlaix, 
uh, picturesque Breton town which each year opens its arms to the English tourist. Now that's not surprising because it's estimated that within the 24 hours that they're here, each one of those 1,000 people will spend something like £100 and that doesn't do the local economy any harm at all. The beer is one of the, of course, one of the cheapest things to buy over here and wine very, very cheap. The rest of the stuff they can get in England just as cheap. Is it going to be a good trip back? Well, I think it's going to be fun going back this time. <laughs> good luck. Thank you. The ship is in port for a few hours before setting sail for the return trip to Plymouth. We're on our way back now, but we have a real treat for you, a part of the ship that passengers don't usually get to see. I'm here on the bridge with Captain Morven Koik, who has kindly agreed to take a few moments to chat to us. Captain, what a huge responsibility commanding a ship of this size. Yes, it is definitely a huge responsibility. The ship is 184 meters long, 31 meters wide. We can carry up to 2,400 passengers. And so, uh, yeah, it is definitely a big responsibility. And I understand that you've had quite an illustrious career. You've really risen through the ranks. Uh, First uh, work on Brit for Britannia Ferries on the Quiberon it was in 1999 as a cadet, and then I changed uh, to mate and first mate, and now captain for Britannia Ferries in uh, 2015. So you must have seen a lot of changes over that time. But you're celebrating 50 years of crossings uh, this year. What are your predictions, perhaps, for ferry travel of the future? <laughs> the next 50 years is a very uh, long time to go. Uh, things are changing every day. We have now changed the fleet. We are renewing the fleet with, uh, for example, LNG ships. The next one will be hybrid with batteries and energy. For the next 50 years, <laughs> it's so far. We don't know what technology could uh, let us do, and we still don't know what the passengers' expectation would be at that time. But an exciting future ahead, no doubt. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. You're welcome. Of course, it's not just about British passengers making their way to the continent. It's a busy route for freight and European visitors making the journey to the UK too. In 1977, a sailing brought football supporters from Saint-Étienne, whose team were playing Manchester United at Plymouth's home park, of all places. The European Cup competition tie had to be moved from Manchester to the south coast as a punishment because of crowd trouble at a previous game. Yes, yes. I have. Are you happy about your team playing here in Plymouth tonight? Yes, we are. You're not worried about having a, a, a game on a ground you've never played on before? Uh, but, uh, what do you say? You're not, are you worried at all about the fact that you've not been to Plymouth before to play? No, not worried at all. What do you think, what do you think the score is going to be? Winner. We will, be, we, will be, we will be the winner. You think you'll win? Yes. Who is in, going to win tonight? In French, win. Tonight? Yes. Four oh, for me, one for you. Four for, four for Saint Etienne, yes. one for Manchester United. One for you. Four one. That's yes. the score. Yes. You all agree that's the score? Four yes. one? We shall see tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, sadly for them, their predictions didn't come true. Manchester United went on to win 2-0 in front of 30,000 fans at Home Park. We're approaching Plymouth now and getting ready to disembark. So thank you for joining us for the box on screen. Don't forget to check out our content on YouTube or why not visit the box where you can discover more from our film archive. <laughs>